Hi, in the next few minutes we're going to talk about risk analysis and how you can put numbers to things that can go wrong. So in context of problems with computers, we have a lot of questions that we need answers to and the boss is asking us to estimate. So for instance, how likely is a server failure? How are we going to have power outages? When should we replace our network router? When do employees get hacked? And what happens if we have a flood or a fire? What's the probabilities of each of these? And it's difficult because a lot of us would give answers like this. Well, it's pretty likely. Or not very often. So a boss is going to have to spend real money to estimate on problems that don't have numbers. So we can't just give him vague answers. We've got to come up with some kind of a formula that can help him answer these questions. So the purpose of this video is to give you some kind of a guideline when your boss asks you questions like how often and how probable. So we have a formula about the severity of a problem divided by the probability times its regularity and that will give us our risk value. So to come up with a better answer for our boss we need to come up with some numbers in a scale. For instance, in the severity problem we're going to have some very bad consequences and some negligible consequences. So for instance, if there is a consequence that is very little change to your routine, your health habits, your finances of your operations, let's call that negligible. Or you might have some minor pain. Let's raise that to maybe a six to 10 level. Or we say this is critical. These are things that we have to pay attention to. Or catastrophic means this will end the business. Or in the case of a personal problem, you might die. So that's the severity. Also, let's think about the probability because severity doesn't mean it happens every day. So if it's probable every day, then we'll call it certain. That's the bottom of our scale. If it's very rare, almost never happens, then we'll give it the top value. And so we'll go from this scale, I'm just going to choose from zero to 50, and that will be our probability scale. Now the regularity of an event is just as important as the other two. Because if you are putting yourself at risk every single day, then you would call that a habit. And we'll put that down at the scale of near the 100 value. And if it rarely happens, like a once in a lifetime event, then the regularity is obviously almost zero. So when we estimate problems, we're going to take these factors into account. The severity, the probability, the regularity, and then we'll be able to assign a risk value to an event. Let's distinguish between the severity of an item and the probability of an item with a few remarks here from Alex Honnold. He's known as the first person, and I believe the only, to free climb the enormous cliff in El Capitan in Yosemite National Park. I feel like people need to differentiate risk and consequence because like, the risk of falling off something is sort of determined only by by how hard the climbing is, how solid the climber is, you know, that's kind of something that only the climber can really know. But the consequences of falling off something, you know, can be pretty obvious just from like a photograph, you know, because that's kind of the thing is that people always see me like give a slideshow and they, or they see videos and they're like, that's super risky because you're so high off the ground. And I'm like, you know, it's a super high consequence because if I fall, I'm going to fall 2000 feet, you know, obviously that would be a horrible thing. But like, you can't really determine risk just by seeing a photo. You know, like you can't really tell how solid I am, how hard the climbing is, how good the rock is, like all the different factors that go into, you know, whether or not something is risky. You know, I mean, you can't really judge that unless you're actually in the experience. I mean, it's definitely a personal choice on my part to like seek out adventure climbing, you know, risky climbing. And that's just, you know, my personal aesthetic. Like I like, you know, I like soloing, I like big walls, I like, you know, questing into the unknown a little bit. Um, you know, there are plenty of other climbers out there who could be happy just bouldering, just sport climbing, just doing really, really hard moves. And, you know, I mean, that's, that's sufficient for some people. Um, for me, it's not. You know, I like the adventure. The thing about risk-taking is that everybody takes risks to some extent. So, like, I take risks when I'm climbing. I take risks when I'm gym. I've broken my arm gym climbing. You know, so, I mean, I take risks, like, in all aspects of my life. I've, like, almost crashed my car a few times. Um, you know, that's pretty risky. Um, you know, every time I fly, I take, like, an infinitesimal risk. You know, any any time I do anything, I'm taking some. Any any time I eat out, I have a risk of food poisoning or something. You know, I mean, life is full of risk. 
I wouldn't say that risk is super important for my climbing, but I would say that it definitely heightens the experience in some way. I mean, anytime that there are consequences, you know, it forces you to perform a little better, it forces you to take things slightly more seriously. Um, you know, I mean, a certain degree of risk, like, makes, makes it all a little more exciting. You know, like, seeing that something is slightly dangerous and then, like, sort of figuring out the best way to, you know, make that safe and then executing it. I mean, I, I heard some quote once that climbing was all about taking a dangerous situation and making it safe, you know, or something like that. And, um, you know, I mean, I think that's kind of the, the reward from, like, adventure climbing is to take something that seems kind of sketchy and then to, like, make it feel comfortable to yourself and be like, oh, sweet, you know, I, I managed that. What a, what a good experience. So you might not be climbing El Capitan, but here is an example of where you might be climbing. Let's talk about the misuse of, an, of a ladder and what the probability, consequences, and regularity are. So let's say if we were to come up with a risk factor of this event, the severity is pretty high. People fall off ladders, and they crack their head, and they even die. So that's a pretty high level. The likelihood of this happening, or the probability, is pretty low. You're not going to fall and it's not quite zero, but most people climb a ladder without getting hurt. And the regularity, how often do you climb up to a roof? So if you are actually putting shingles on a roof for a living, the regularity is high. Otherwise, you might just say this one time. So if we were to come up with these three values, severity, probability, and regularity, go ahead and estimate what you think they are, because this is really an estimation process. So I'm going to give you three numbers. I'm going to say 15 is pretty severe. Uh, probability is pretty low. And regularity, we don't do this very often. So the, uh, the risk of dying on a ladder is I'm going to give it a 7.5. Okay, you got to come up with a number. You can't tell your boss, kind of likely. you got to give him a number. So here's my number, 7.5. Now let's compare a different kind of behavior. Not jumping off of ladders or falling off of ladders, but this time smoking. So severity, probability, and regularity. So the severity is pretty bad. Smoking will kill you. We know that lung cancer is a pretty common event. How about probability, though? So we know that if you smoke one cigarette, the probability of a single cigarette is like zero. You'll, you won't die from it. Unless, of course, you choke on the gases that are coming out of the cigarette. But the, the long-term effects is really the problem. And so the regularity is going to show up here as two packs a day. This is a habit. And so we'll give these numbers here as 15 for the severity, two for the probability, and regularity is 100. So you ask, why is, why is probability so low? Well, because the probability of a single cigarette causing death is almost zero. However, the regularity is two packs a day, so that multiplies it at the, the, that 100 level. So the 750 is the scale of the risk formula that we're going to come up with on this. Now, of course, you're going to come up with estimates that are slightly different, but I think you can see that a ladder is less risky than smoking. How about climbing Mount Everest? Severity? Probability? Regularity? I'm going to say severity is high because you can die. Probability is likely because if you are on the mountain, uh, the, the percentage of people that die up there seems to be quite high. And the regularity, though, is uh, probably once. I mean, how often do you go to Mount Everest? So we've got, we got these numbers. I'm going to use 20, 40, and 1. So when you multiply all those together and divide, the actual risk factor of Everest is a 0.5. That's assuming you only go once in your lifetime. If you're a Sherpa and you're climbing every day, obviously this is going to be a different number for you. How about minor surgery? What kind of a number could we put on that? So let's say the uh, consequences are pretty low. There's never going to be uh, horrible things happen. Not usually. However, the probability is that uh, not bad either because doctors are well trained. They use good equipment and good practices. And then the regularity, not very often either. So I don't go to surgery every day. And so when we're done here, we've got a 7. I'll give it a 5 and a 1. This is a 1.4. So minor surgery is not a big risk factor in your life, likely. So now let's do a comparison of all four of these activities. So we said 7.5 for the ladder. We got 750 for smoking, 0.5 for the mountain, and 1.4 for the surgery. Now, your assumptions and all of these regularities and severities will obviously be different than the conclusions that I came up with. 
and that's where we can start to argue about the numbers. But the important part is that we have a number now that we can assign to the event, and then we can start putting resources and money and education and interventions toward it, and so that's where business decisions are made once we have some data. So why is smoking at 750? It's because of the regularity of the event. The actual single cigarette is a very minor risk, but if you do two packs a day, we're going to give it a hundred value for its regularity, and that just changes the risk factor at the end. Now Everest shows up to be the least risky of these events. Why is that? Well, climbing is serious. You can fall and die, and the overall danger is low because you've only going to put yourself in this situation one time. And so compared to smoking, Everest looks pretty safe. So we've put some risk analysis and numbers together, and now we have a way that we can calculate how likely something is to happen. So in conclusion, the point of this exercise is that we are talking about risks that happen to our business. And so since I talk about information technology and risk that is associated with that, we can now start talking about numbers such as server failures, power outages, how often people get hacked, when fires occur, how, how likely is a flood. Put all these things together and now you can start to build a plan for minimizing your risk and the analysis that goes with it. So this video is part of a series in an information technology class. And so I'm going to ask my students to come up with a scenario and to make a decision based on the risk factors involved. So like a company that wants to move its servers from one location to another, are we going to have to factor in things like the security and the reliability and the cost? And so those are decisions that come up with disaster recovery plans and with business interruption plans. So that's what's ahead for you if you're interested in this kind of a subject.